vast uh, welcome to the program uh, here at Council of English. May I first ask what's your takeaway from the meeting with caretaker Prime Minister General Prayut Chan um, the other day? What are, have there been the any prime meeting of the Prime Minister was very positively mm -hmm. uh, appreciated by us because Sri Lanka is coming out of a crisis situation. Right. Prime Minister was fully uh, aware of the uh, factors mm -hmm. and also the progress and having been able to discuss with the Prime Minister the key areas, uh, Sri Lanka is very happy that the support that Thailand is going to extend to Sri Lanka in order to consolidate some of the areas under discussion mm -hmm. was mentioned by the Prime Minister mm -hmm. uh, which is a very positive mm -hmm. step at this time in addition to uh, the further relations mm -hmm. in terms of the agreements uh, economic agreements that we are already involved with uh, Prime Minister was looking forward to those Right. Could you dwell a little in, into the details as to what sort of agreement? Or what we are in the process of discussing the free trade agreement. With mm -hmm. uh, We have had about uh, two rounds mm -hmm. and uh, going into the final round, which will give uh, more um, opportunities to the Thai as well as Sri Lankan uh, businessmen plus uh, our uh, products to enter each market right. and also possibly uh, being able to work out a framework mm -hmm. through it uh, for entire investment to come in which is being taken up at another round of discussions uh, in end of August right. uh, because Sri Lanka can not only be an investment uh, uh, for Thai investment it can also uh, take advantage of the value-added uh, uh, agreements Sri Lanka has reached with other SAR countries mm -hmm. where the advantage of getting uh, certain uh, tariffs off uh, gives advantage to the investor in Sri Lanka. Right. So some of the Thai industry can come in, mm -hmm. go for value-added and to re-export which will be uh, positive for Sri Lanka as well as uh, to Thailand. And I would look forward to a very close uh, relationship with, with Thailand and Sri Lanka. Right. Um, about all the, uh, all the business, what field of business does Sri Lanka want the business person and investor of Thailand to do business in? And what field of business do you think is interesting uh, for foreign investors? Sri Lanka at the moment is given highest priority, just taken up uh, with the Prime Minister also, is the port city development. This is a big financial hub. Uh, we are in the making and investment uh, in the hub, uh, also in some of the key areas. So this is in the city of Colombo, just outside, right. which is we take is a very important. And other areas, uh, Sri Lanka has not reserved, uh, except for uh, security and strategic areas, uh, we have relaxed for any investment or joint venture to take place in uh, uh, other sectors of the economy, renewable energy, is there another area where they can come in, uh, in industry, some of the industrials uh, using Sri Lankan raw material or a finished product from Sri Lanka to the adjoining markets. We have also, mm, the discussions have been on, interest have been shown in the gem and jewellery industry. Both countries have gems. Both countries have been in the very traditional game for centuries. Uh, 
right. in exporting gems, jewelry, creative art of gems and uh, jewelry. Right. So this is uh, another positive thing that is on at the moment. Sure. We hope uh, we'll be able to uh, get uh, things moving faster. Of course, in order to get things moving faster was also discussed and we look forward to because there have been certain obstacles, red tape, etc. Right. Which we are, our president is relaxing, uh, the new government is relaxing so that we can move faster. There are the other areas of um, travel, trade. Sri Lanka is also uh, in the tourism, beautiful country. Just like Thailand, it's a beautiful country visited by people from various parts of the world. So we are in the process of uh, expanding and developing, even for joint ventures uh, or um, investment, uh, solely operated in the hotel sector, hospitality, trade. This is also a new area that will grow. Agriculture, uh, we are discussing I and mean, we are already in some of the agriculture product areas. Mm -hmm. Traditionally we are in uh, tea and rubber, uh, but new areas of agriculture exports, food processing, preservating, preservation, you know, bringing it to the market uh, without um, any waste taking place are also areas that we have uh, been discussed and interest has been shown. Right. Um, looking back to the economic crisis that engulfed um, Sri Lanka, um, you know, the, the world really watched with interest as to what had happened over the past year. What, what has there been anyone held accountable for what happened and uh, what is the lessons learned um, from you know, the, the economic crisis? Also, would it be fair to, you know, some would, would claim that uh, actually one of the big factors was China's so-called death uh, diplomacy. Would that be fair to say China played a role in the economic crisis uh, which hit Sri Lanka last year? I would um, rather Put it this way, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka faced a severe economic crisis uh, during the one year, one and a half years COVID period, pandemic. Right. Economy came to a virtual standstill. We have, all the countries faced this, okay. not only Sri Lanka, right across the world, the rich and the poor, mm -hmm. all countries faced this. Economies collapsed mm -hmm. because the world economy was moving slow, slowed down. Exports to the developed countries, uh, the rich countries, also slowed down. So the overall export uh, factor uh, played soon as uh, we were coming out of the COVID, uh, uh, hit the economy because we Sri Lanka is ex basically export three, four items, apparel, tea, uh, tourism, came to virtual standstill. Uh, now we have picked up uh, totally. So it is not uh, solely the debt problem. Right. Debt problem is one problem of mismanagement. Mm -hmm. Heavy borrowings. Mm -hmm. You know, you borrow, mm -hmm. if you don't invest in uh, positive uh, result making ventures, uh, you have to carry the burden of from repaying borrowings. So that is one aspect. Sri Lankan rupee was collapsing. The indicators were showing it was collapsing. Now it has stabilized. In fact, it has stabilized to the extent that we have gained heavily from about 360 rupees to a dollar. It has come down to 290 now last week. So certain amount of stability with the IMF um, agreement on. Mm. I, coming back to the problem of how 
uh, borrowings were taking place and how we were investing in private uh, bonds, etc. Uh, it, uh, that cost heavily when the investors were withdrawing. Uh, obviously, the uh, country was suffering, you had to repay, you had to pay out uh, in the international financial circles. Uh, we did not have like other rich countries heavy reserve to bank on. Uh, if this is the area where borrowing and reserves play and borrowing and if you do not have enough reserves in a crisis situation, you go into a further crisis. So I should put the question correctly. Mismanagement uh, which is being looked at, there is uh, legislation that is coming in order to uh, take uh, some of the measures necessary for uh, institutionalized uh, decisions which are made, perhaps wrong decision. Uh, we are on it now. We are on it. We are coming back. The confidence is the main thing for a economy that is collapsing to rebound. Right. Confidence has come. You know, to what about tell you. The role of China, I mean, is that fair? Because there have been a differing view as to the role of China uh, and what she played in, in what happened in Sri Lanka. Is it fair to say China was part of the problem or is it not fair? China has been uh, well, working with Sri Lanka for the last over 50 years, I must say. You know, first agreement for rice rubber with China was signed in 1951-2. So we have been dealing with China uh, as a part of, of, as a part of, one would say, alternative monetary uh, factors because, you know, um, these agreements uh, of that nature where um, you buy Chinese uh, uh, rice mm -hmm. for our rubber. Mm. Uh, so there is no transaction really. So it is value-wise butter. Mm -hmm. So this was a success story. Mm. And Chinese investment in various other industry, etc. It was growing. And when they came in for the Hambantota Harbour, mm -hmm. it was a major investment. So Hambantota was offered to uh, European countries also. Mm -hmm. No one was interested in taking Hambantota. The in interesting part is Hambantota is a port which when in order to build the new port, one must study the maritime lanes, the traffic that goes from Africa to Asia right. crosses almost on the uh, vicinity of uh, Colombo and Hambantote. Mm -hmm. So, as others were not taking on, Chinese accepted the uh, risk of investing for Hambantote Harbour and the um, Matala Airport. So, these are long term steps that were taken. Of course, there is borrowing, but Chinese borrowing and the IMF uh, obligations that Sri Lanka has with the Paris uh, uh, donor country uh, club members, mm -hmm. uh, all of them have now come to one round table, Not might not be for uh, same conditions on the repayment and readjustment of debt. So, the fear that the Chinese um, uh, create the situation, I think uh, it's also obviously, it has to be one argument. Mm -hmm. But it is not really the facts because we have built our infrastructure with Chinese assistance and also the, with the Western countries' assistance, our hydropower, our irrigation systems. Uh, has been uh, built over the years 
uh, which today are bringing results because our farmers were the first to accept the challenge. Right. We shall deliver if the necessary uh, raw the fertilizer is given. Now that the, the last harvest was a bumper harvest, I must say. So it is not only China, all other countries, India. India has been heavily investing in Sri Lanka and supporting Sri Lanka. Uh, I think India has um, given um, in the crisis situation the largest uh, support in financial terms. Right. Sri Lanka has been always friendly with all. So this is the policy of Sri Lanka. Sir, may I ask a quick question about uh, Sri Lanka's economic again? Uh, I would like to ask, how is the progress of Sri Lanka's economic recovery attempt been going after Sri Lanka pushed forward an economic revolution plan as agreed with the IMF? Yeah, the new government of President Ranil Wickremesinghe as president has been able to take on the challenge because uh, the financial crisis was the biggest that Sri Lanka has faced, the unprecedented crisis, I must say. Of course, on a long term, very well planned discussions with IMF and other countries that are assisting, Sri Lanka is moving on track, on track, step by step. Um, there's a restructuring in some of the state ventures, which have now been listed and being offered, uh, which will reduce the burden uh, to a large extent on some of the borrowings, as well as attract investors. Uh, on the financial sector, uh, mismanaged sectors of un uh, unnecessary expenditure has been pruned down. Sri Lanka is feeling it, but it has to come because you have to prune down and then start rebuilding. The essentials have been, sectors are running. Uh, so, it's on track, I would say. Tourism is back. Tourism is back. Uh, uh, very heavy tra tourist traffic is now coming into Sri Lanka. We're trying to cope both seasons, you know. Winter from some parts of the world and some, uh, winter months, later on other parts of the world, mm, plus our neighboring countries uh, visiting Sri Lanka uh, also has started. All the way from Russia, tourists are coming. Uh, they are coming to India, they are coming to Sri Lanka, they are coming to Maldives. So, they are tourists, uh, they are nothing uh, political in it. So, so the tourist industry is really back, almost back to uh, normal. normal levels. It will increase further. Airlines are coming in, which are not flying in to Colombo, now it's flying in, which is a plus factor. Also on the restructuring, I, was, I mentioned, when that was laid down, we are following the pattern. Uh, the electricity board restructuring has begun, one of the biggest state-owned enterprises uh, facing a lot of difficulty. Our, on the plan, we are inviting investors to come in on alternative energy, renewable energy, so that, because Sri Lanka is not a producer of oil, everything we had to import, and the dependency on imported oil, petrol, diesel, all, uh, has to be reduced. Right. Uh, for that, uh, we have to have renewable energy. Sri Lanka has 12 or 13 hours of sunshine, untapped. There is a place for the investor now. Anyone is being welcome. Uh, and, um Domestic helpers, um, Mr. Prime Minister, you know, as Sri Lanka 
uh, depends quite uh, significantly on the exports of um, um, female or, or women uh, domestic workers. Uh, but what we hear, you know, uh, once in a while is the abuse by the employers um, of these uh, Sri Lankan um, domestic uh, helpers uh, in the Middle East or elsewhere. Are there any plans to really, you know, either protect them or build more jobs so that these women uh, do not really have to fly in uh, such a large number to seek jobs abroad and, and send remittance back home? Yeah, the um, issue is that Sri Lanka is one of the highest literary, literal countries in Asia. Let's not forget that. We have the best health system for years. Right. So, um, free education has brought um, a new generation uh, to the market. Right. So if the economy is not expanding to absorb them, it is they find sources which are available to go abroad. From the east uh, 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 countries, um, success, the rich countries to Japan, Korea, also absorbed a lot of um, working people, from youth from Sri Lanka, from Gulf countries, southern Europe. So it's about, I would say, officially, it is about uh, 1.5 million. Uh, million. Are they mostly women? Uh, no, not mostly women. It is, of course, mostly women, as you say, get into the news because they, when they face a situation uh, in different countries, the news goes. Uh, okay. so, uh, but there is also an issue that we are tackling now, that people travel uh, without... Uh, agreements. You know, normally Sri Lanka has agreements with all the countries. Uh, but traveling is also becoming relaxed by other countries. So you just can go with a visa and land without being under the agreement. We have only about 1.1 under agreements. The rest are those who have gone. Some remain over the years, don't come back. Some are um, using the platform to get to Europe. So it is a situation. So we are trying to um, target this um, problem of traveling without agreement. If they go, if they are going to work, there has to be some response from those countries that they get registered. They fall into some register. Uh, this we are discussing with even with the IO, IOU, the International Office of Migration. So it's not a major problem where every female is trying to leave. No, there is an entrepreneur in the rural level that is now picking up. Mm, there are other income avenues like farming, export farming that is coming in where women uh, are playing a uh, initiative role. Right. Okay. So Thailand, please, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, may I ask uh, one question? Thai people are currently paying paying a lot of attention to the story of Thai elephants in Sri Lanka that was sent to participate in Buddhist relic ceremony in Sri Lanka. Well, I heard yesterday, uh, Mr. Prayuthan Shah, the Prime Minister of Thailand, said that he appreciates. Yeah, that's the correct one. He appreciates that Sri Lanka has approved of sending Matuprasha elephants back to Thailand. So uh, please may I ask about the current condition of other two elephants, Thai elephants, that are still in Sri Lanka. Uh, yeah, the Prime Minister was very much uh, happy that Sri Lanka uh, has been very uh, cooperative to uh, treat Matushka um, back in Thailand. There have been initially uh, some of the veterans, vets who flew and gave uh, treatment. Uh, but Sri Lanka, uh, we have the zoological gardens, mm -hmm. but we don't have special, specialized hospitals or specialized care 
uh, areas developed and researched by the veterinary uh, uh, yeah, so which Thailand has. Uh, I was, I would look forward in the future that Thailand would expand this uh, uh, medical areas uh, even to Sri Lanka because we have a fair number of uh, thousands of elephants still in Sri Lanka in the wild as well as the tame. So we will extend all the support and highest, uh, highest appreciation of the Thai government's interest to treat the elephant after getting back. Uh, these things happen across the world. Mm, um, Sri Lanka had not done anything intentionally, but perhaps uh, the elephants um, carrying uh, or work, getting in heavy work uh, could affect, I agree. So there are a lot to learn as we move along. So finally, our last question. Um, Prime Minister, you're partly here to also participate in the Visak, or what the Thai call Visak Busha Day, the uh, uh, historical Buddha's birthday. Uh, how would you describe the ties between Sri Lanka and Thailand when it comes to Buddhism? You know, there's a lot of exchanges, I know, but is there any thing that perhaps we should look forward to or, or could do to strengthen and deepen the ties amongst uh, Buddhists in both countries? Very much. Uh, Thai, uh, London, and Sri Lanka are very much uh, bound together by Theravada Buddhism. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been the foundation of our historical relationship. Uh, Lanka temple was started many centuries ago in Thailand and Sri Lanka when we needed uh, to uh, ordain uh, a new order, we came to Thailand mm -hmm. and the Thai uh, Oh. Uh, yeah, order. Yeah, Upali, Upali Mahathir mm -hmm. from Ayodhya went to Sri Lanka to uh, set up the new sector, which is named Siam, mm -hmm. because at that time uh, this, it was from Siam. So the Sri Lanka's uh, Bhikkhu order has a Siam sector, so, which is very, very much uh, closely in relationship with Thailand and Buddhist activity, even uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Vesak, we call Vesak in singular in our language, uh, Vaisaka uh, in, uh, so it is understood by all the Buddhists in our, uh, not only two countries across the world and Thailand and Sri Lanka sponsored the resolution at the UN to make uh, Vesak, an international day of um, Vesak to be declared as a holiday. Okay. We have come a long way and we have to... The Dhamma is wanted by uh, all parts of the world because life needs a new uh, area, new parts of consolation. Meditation is picking up in other parts of the world. Similarly, yoga is picking up. Uh, Dharma, Buddhist, uh, Buddha's teachings is picking up faster than ever before. Because the world uh, is looking for uh, more um, uh, consolation, I would say, uh, amidst all the problems that are growing uh, with fast life. So, so we were, uh, plan to work together. We discuss. We plan to work together and the 18th uh, conference uh, to mark the UN Vesak Day uh, held in Thailand and did invite me as a keynote speaker and as Prime Minister I accepted the relationship between Sri Lanka and Thailand. Um, uh, Prime Minister Gunabad, uh, thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a safe trip uh, back home. Thank you. Thank you Hope to see you someday. <laughs>